Hi everybody, uh, it's Dr. Alicia here from She Found Health. I just wanted to come on at the end of my clinic day today and do a pretty quick update on the coronavirus, where we are, what do we know, uh, and I would like to talk a little bit about social distancing, about how it can affect pregnancy, breastfeeding, and newborn babies, and I want to talk a little bit about how we've changed our policies within our clinic and how our hospitals change its policies to help keep everybody safe. Um, so if you're pregnant, wanting to become pregnant, if you have postpartum or a newborn and you want more information like this, please subscribe below um, and like this video so that we know what you like. Also, we'd love to hear some comments in the bottom about what kinds of topics that you'd like to have more information about having to do with anything around that. But let's get into this topic. Now, we're going to keep this relatively brief and quick. I'm going to attach some blog posts down below that has more detailed information, so check those out if you're interested. So first thing, coronavirus. What do we know about coronavirus? So it's a virus. Um, the one that we're talking about specifically is called COVID-19, and it hopped from animal to human back in January, late December, early January, it seems like, in Wuhan, China. Since then, it has spread hugely. Uh, earlier today, we are talking about 175 to 180,000 people affected, diagnosed with this disease, and over 6,000 deaths um, to date. Now, these numbers aren't necessarily real because we haven't been swabbing everybody with an influenza-like illness. So the symptoms we're talking about is cough, runny nose, um, fevers, headaches, diarrhea, muscle aches or myalgias is what we call them. So a lot of people who get mild symptoms of those aren't being swabbed or tested. One, we don't have the resources to do it, but it also presents like a common cold sometimes. So our numbers are actually probably significantly higher than we think. Um, so that's the basics of coronavirus. In Canada, we have over 300 cases and over three deaths right now, and it's I think it's just beginning. So there's a lot of work that we can do in the community to help slow the spread, decrease the spread of coronavirus, and that's what we're going to talk about next. So social distancing. This is a huge buzzword on social media right now, and essentially it's all about separating yourself from other people to decrease the risk of you potentially transmitting something to them or them potentially transmitting something to you. So the less people we have in contact with, the less chance that we have of spreading it in between ourselves. Um, and the recommendation is at least six feet or two meters between us. So we know that this is spread by droplets. So if I were to cough and it spreads out to you, if it hits you in your mucous membranes, which are eyes, nose, mouth, that's how we transmit the virus. The other way that it's commonly spread is from surfaces. So if someone who were to sick, cough in their mouth, touch a surface, and then I were to come along, touch a surface, and then scratch my nose, scratch my eye, I can get it that way. And we think the coronavirus or COVID-19 can actually live on a surface for two days. So this is a, a significant issue. Um, so how can we do a better job of social distancing? So let's talk about, first of all, at work. All of your employers should be coming up with great policies so you can work at home. Do as much as possible from home. Any meetings that happen to happen need to happen, that can be done on the phone, that can be done through video conferencing. Um, you can get all kinds of work done at home for the most case. Any meetings in person that don't need to happen can be deferred until all of this passes. And on the rare occasion that you need a meeting in person, sit at the opposite end of the room, no shaking hands, no sharing materials, just be very cautious to stay well away from each other. Um, another thing that workplaces can implement if people do need to go at work is having frequent hand washing breaks, having hand sanitizer, if you can get it, available for hand washing. And remember that's 20 seconds of hand washing in between all of the cracks, all over, lower wrists, everywhere that you are going to touch on a regular basis. You want to make sure you're using soap and water to do that. And that is great. If you don't have access to soap and water, if you're out and about, then having hand sanitizer and using that is effective as well. The other thing that we can do is frequently wiping down surfaces with disinfectant spray. So things like Lysol wipes are fine or a good cleaning spray. You can even dilute down bleach and you can find all kinds of remedies online about what you need to do for that. So wiping that down and, and um, cleaning it off frequently during the day if people have to be in a workplace. Um, so that's the big thing about work and certainly if you are having any symptoms, cold-like symptoms, you need to be self-isolating so you don't go to work. And if your employers ask you for a sick note, you can respectfully tell them that your physician is a wee bit busy right now and then in maybe a few months they might be able to get to it. But if you're feeling ill, 
you need to stay home and not spread that whatever virus it is to other people. Um, so in terms of home stuff, how can we help decrease the risk at home and improve our social distancing while well, only associating with your close family members. So not going to birthday parties, not going to the rec centers, not um, getting together at a bar or going out to dinner with each other. During this time, really sticking close to home. If you have a few friends you want to invite over for a dinner party, making sure that they're well and they're not having symptoms and have them open over have a good time, keep your space amongst you, but try not to go out into places that have lots of people around. Um, this is really tough with kids, and of course, you can get outside, go for walks, go for bike rides, go to the park and play, have a good time, that's totally fine to do, um, but just avoiding big places. So if you can take your kids out of daycare or school at this point, that's a great way of social distancing because those kids are so close together and they're just in each other's faces all the time, spreading their germs about. Um, in terms of activities, which we've kind of touched upon, avoiding the places that have lots of people. So we're talking about gymnasiums, we're talking about recreation centers, swimming pools, we're talking about the mall, we're talking about all of those places that people congregate and touch surfaces. We want to avoid those places as much as we possibly can. If you can order your groceries online, order your groceries online. If you can get supplies um, via the mail, do that for now. And then once this all settles down, we can revert back to our old habits, but hopefully we'll be better hand hygiene at that point. Um, in terms of travel is the other one. So travel around the city, driving your car, riding a bicycle, walking, those are all fine to do. Avoiding public transit if you can. Now it's really tough for pe some people, so if you're not able to avoid public transit and you can shift to a slower time of the day to use it, that's great. If you can coordinate with a colleague or a friend about carpooling, ride sharing, that's another great option because there's just less people and you can make sure you're both healthy when you're doing that. Um, but that's, that is going to be a, a tough one for some people who rely on bus systems or subways to get around, especially if they have to get into work or get to appointments. Um, any And speaking about appointments, any non-urgent appointments, defer them off. So if you have a dentist appointment, defer it off. If you have a, a doctor's appointment that's something that's kind of ongoing and doesn't need to happen right now, defer it or see if they can talk to you on the phone or telehealth uh, video conferencing around that. Just avoiding going to any, pl any places that there's lots of people at. Um, so the third topic we wanted to talk about was pregnancy, breastfeeding, and newborn issues with the COVID-19. So currently all the information we have does not make it seem that women who are pregnant have an increased risk of getting COVID-19 or increased risk of having bad outcomes from COVID-19. So the highest risk population for bad outcomes we know are the elderly or those with comorbid diseases. So comorbid diseases are things like high blood pressure, diabetes, um, immune compromise due to chemotherapy or medications that you're on to control diseases. So those people have a higher risk of contracting and having bad outcomes from coronavirus or COVID-19. Currently, um, women who are pregnant or who have recently given birth or newborns don't seem to have any major increased risk over the baseline of their age. There have to date been no deaths in children under the age of 10, which is very reassuring, including newborns, and there have been a few newborns who have contracted this. So same thing applies. If you're having, if you're pregnant, you're having mild to moderate symptoms, stay at home, self-isolate, make sure you're doing well, make sure baby is moving. Um, if you're having symptoms you're worried about, call your care provider or call the hospital labor delivery room. Don't just go in. Warn them that you're coming because we can set up an isolated area to help decrease the risk of you giving it to other people, both healthcare workers but other patients as well. Because remember, if healthcare workers get it, then we have to self-isolate and then we can't provide care to other people, including you. So just being very cautious about um, when you're entering healthcare places, making sure that people are well warned so we can take precautions to help uh, protect both you and other people. If you have a newborn baby or you're breastfeeding and you're getting symptoms, what we'd like you to do is work on your hand hygiene, so making sure you're washing your hands before you're touching your baby, and you can wear a mask if you're breastfeeding or if you're around your baby, and that will help decrease the risk. We still want you breastfeeding and we still want your skin to skin because we, you create immunoglobulins that you pass on to your baby, and that's very important in helping to fight diseases. So continue to do that, just making precautions that you're not going to be coughing on your baby and making sure your hand hygiene is, is excellent. So the last thing that I want to kind of touch base on is policies around um, with clinics and 
hospital. So our clinic, we have a large maternity population, and so part of our role is to protect that population. So we've created a lot of um, tele-options, so phone appointments or video appointments for people who need to talk to us, get prescription renewals, uh, talk about their need, talk about other things, or screen for viral illnesses, so people who are feeling unwell and just need to talk and get some advice. We've created a lot of appointments for that. Uh, for our pregnant women, uh, we're trying to space out their appointments or talk to them on the phone in between appointments to make sure that they're still feeling healthy and well, um, and then we'll get them in for certain appointments that we need to monitor their blood pressure and baby's heart rate. Um, for our newborn appointments as well, we need to ma make sure baby is gaining weight appropriately, so we're trying to space out appointments as much as we can, but we also want to make sure that the babies are safe. We're also offering appointments in between to chat with parents about any concerns or issues that they might have. Um, in terms of hospital policies, and this is going to be a tough one for a lot of families because birth is a really joyous and exciting time, but we also need to keep ourselves safe and we need to keep the people around us safe. So our hospital in Victoria, Victoria General Hospital, has implemented a few policies to help to do that, to keep our population safe. So number one, only one support person during delivery um, and if this person is sick they cannot come on the ward so make sure you have your support person lined up do your best to keep them healthy but have a backup in place as well for that and that includes doulas and friends so only one person can be with you during that um, during that labor and delivery same thing applies on the mother babe or the postpartum unit there's only one person who can be your support person and that's the same person the whole time you're there and if they're sick they're going to be asked to leave so making sure that uh, we have a healthy healthy partner as much as possible to help support us during that time the other thing that we're not able to use on labor delivery is the nitrous oxide or the lasting gas and that's the, the gas that you can breathe in that provides some pain relief and the reason is that because we think that that might aerosolize or create um, more infectiousness with the COVID-19 so because we want to decrease that risk for everybody involved we're not going to allow women to use that until this is passed so we still have the other pain management options um, including showers and exercise balls um, medications that we can give you by the intravenous or um, by your muscles or epidurals those are all still fine but we're trying to limit the use of the nitrous oxide or that laughing gas medication um, in terms of going home, we're going to try to decrease people's stay as much as it, we can for, but we want to, for safety reasons. Um, we want to keep people healthy, but we want to make sure they're safe before we discharge them. So that'll be on a case by case discussion with your healthcare provider. Great. So that's COVID-19 in a nutshell. Very condensed. There's lots of more information out there. A great site to go to is the bccdc.ca, and I will link that below. So check that out. That's got all the up-to-date information on screening, how to take care of yourself, social isolation, self-quarantine, all of that information. Um, if you found this topic helpful, please subscribe below. We're going to start in April having regular content every Wednesday morning coming out, uh, including blog posts, YouTube videos you can check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca so everybody get out there wash your hands socially distance and stay safe